Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another Pro to Pro Live. We are coming to you live this afternoon from our Cape Ann project here in Massachusetts. And for the next 30 minutes, we are going to be talking about the skills gap, the problem of recruiting young people into the building trades, talking about why that's a problem and what, what, what some of the potential solutions could be. We're doing this today in collaboration with our friends at Home Advisor. And so let me introduce two of the folks who may work with us today. Mr. Silva, Tommy, good nice to be, to be with here. you. Nice and to our be special here. guest, Dan DeClerico. Good to see you again. Great to be back. Um, so you used to be in the trades, Dan. Um, now you're with Home Advisor, and you know a little bit about this subject. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing for a little while, um, a project called Generation Next. And uh, as Tommy knows, and you may know, this is an opportunity for us to spread the word that there are a lot of available jobs um, and that they're good jobs. And as part of that, we bring young people into the uh, job site to work beside us. Yeah. And we had the distinct pleasure of working with Mike Rowe recently, who everyone knows is very outspoken on Very this outspoken, subject. a good guy, and he's really pushing the awareness of this. And we're, we're glad to be part of it. And Tommy was up on our roof with one of our young apprentices yeah. in our inaugural season. And uh, we got a little bit of a, a clip of that. So we want to show that to you first before we dive into this. Um, and so we're going to roll that and let you guys take a look at it. How hard has it been to find uh, young, enthusiastic help? It's been very hard. Just today, you know, I mean, there's jobs out there. There's a lot of jobs for them. Yeah. But you just can't find somebody to come into the trade. Everybody thinks they got to go somewhere else, you know, get a college education or whatever they need. But they come out of college and they can't find a job. Yeah. You know, it's kind of surprising how easy it is to take a part. I mean, you think of this thing that's been sitting here for over 100 years, and yeah. we're just tap, tap, tap. We're just tap, tap, tap. We don't have to have any skills. But the guy putting it up has to know what he's doing. Yeah. It has to be built right, it has to be built level, it has to be built, built plumb, and it has to be built square. Well, nothing's changed. Chimneys still have to be square, plumb, and level. But how right. come it's so hard to find people who are excited about doing the work these days? They don't realize they can make a great living. They can buy a house, they can have a family, and live a very comfortable life, and be proud of what they do. <laughs> So he's a cool cat. <laughs> he's a cool guy, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, he's very articulate and also very passionate about this subject, which is great. He is very passionate about it. Um, he, you know, he said he's really not talented in any way, but he's great at taking this thing apart. Yeah. And he, and he was having fun. Well, his talent is getting people excited and motivated. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be sticking with that apprentice program. And as I said, for the next half hour, we'll be talking about this problem. If you've got a question for either of these two guys, you can actually put that in the comments section. We are on a couple different platforms live this afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, r.com, thisoldhouse.com. Get those in, and in about 10 or 15 minutes, we will start answering those. But Dan, your show here. Um, I'd like to turn to you and start off by sort of framing the problem and the magnitude of this problem. How big is this hole in the skilled trades? Yeah, no, it's massive. Listen, we don't want to be too doom and gloom here, but I mean, it's a big number. It's about four million currently um, un unfilled uh, jobs throughout the, the uh, throughout the construction industry. We're going to probably see two or three more uh, million jobs go un uh, unfulfilled. Be so before the problem gets better, it's probably going to go a, a lot worse. And so, I mean, this is a key thing that people need to understand. These are existing jobs. Yeah. These aren't jobs that we would fill if we created some program. They're sitting empty right, right now, waiting for people to dive into them. And as you say, it will get worse before it gets better. It will. Yeah. So for you know, Home Advisor, we're we're fielding. 10, 20 million service requests a year. Oh, so obviously, wow. if there are not enough workers, that's, you know, that, that's, to that's, fill a, the request. that's a problem. Yeah. But there's the larger kind of societal issue here. Like, who is going to care for American homes in, in, right. in the years and decades to come? And we got a lot of them, right? Yeah. We got over 100 million houses in this country. Yeah. Um, and we've got people <clears throat> retiring at a rate faster than we can replace them. Hence, your number about it growing from maybe 4 million to possibly 6 million before right. the problem gets right. worse. Right, right, right. So it's a real problem. Yeah, people are retiring out. I mean, the average age, I think, is like 55, 56 years old. In yeah. the trades right in now. In the trades now, and they're going to be retiring out, and who's going to fill those slots? Yeah, There's not enough exactly. people coming in. They're going to retire faster than they're coming in. Yeah, yeah. So we put out a report every year uh, based on a survey of about 800 um, home advisor professionals, and we're sort of trying to capture the, the, the full scale of it. 
uh, the program. So we talk, when we talk about the aging workforce, uh, among electricians, uh, roofers, HVAC contractors, you know, fewer than 5% are in that 18 to 24 age bracket. So, mm. yeah, so as guys retire, just the, the next generation is not coming in to, to take over those jobs. So it's a big problem. We've obviously established that. Tommy, you've told us on many occasions how difficult it is for you to hire people, and you guys are Silver Brothers. You guys are at the top of the heap. Everyone knows Silver Brothers to the show and your mm. own work, and you still have trouble finding we them. We still people. have trouble. I mean, we're fortunate enough that we get them. Uh, you know, and we've got two or three apprentices working on this project right here, uh, and we're fortunate enough that they, they are here. And one of, the, one of the workers that we have on this project right here is the same Michael was the same one that was on the roof yeah. with, uh, yeah. with uh, Mike and myself and talking, and he was that was his first year, and so he's plugging away, and he's here loving what he's doing, still learning. And, and today, for example, you know, three thirty, didn't want to go home. He stayed until another two hours, and on his own tuition. I mean, he wanted to be here to, to work. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so that's a good sign because he's liking what he does. Right. It's a good right. sign, but there aren't enough of him There's, out there, yeah, as yeah, we know from right. this gap. So let's talk about why. Let's think about or talk about why we think young people are not going into the skilled trades. There's a whole host of reasons that have been kicked around there. You got a list? You got a thought for it? Yeah, no, I think first and foremost, there, there still is a perception problem with, with a lot of these jobs. There's this idea that they are you know, blue collar, dead end, uh, low paying jobs. When you look at the numbers, that's that's simply not true. Not true. Yeah, 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 it's really, really not true. What so, do the numbers tell us? So, sort of combating that. So, uh, you know, if we if we look at um, the pay rates, um, an electrician, a, a plumber, you know, a few years in, um, are going to be making forty percent above the national average. Yeah. Um, so you so look at these kids that are going to college, and they're going to college, and they're not really sure what they're going to college for. They're coming out with a degree that they really can't use, right, right. and they can't get a job. Right. So right. if you take a young kid that's gone to work in the trade, starting out as a laborer, what trade it is, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. In four years, he's worked his way up that ladder, and he's making a pretty good living. Exactly. Yeah. So the opportunity cost, yeah. if he, you know, if he or she were to. To, to go to college and that didn't work out. I mean, yeah. it really, it sort of multiplies. So there, you know, if they didn't go to trade school and they worked on the job site, or if they go to trade school and they're working on the job site, they're getting paid. Right. They don't have the debt after that four years, and they're making some money. Right. And then there's job security, because as, yeah. as we're talking here, I mean, this problem's going to get going to get worse before it gets better. So these are these are very very secure jobs. Mm. You call it a perception problem. Um, what's driving the perception problem? What's this, the stigma that you know is hanging out there? Do we have a sense as to what it is? Because clearly there is an industry um, saying to kids at the high school level, you all have to go to college, right? And so that's being um, articulated by administrators, parents, you know, folks in school. Is there anything else that's contributing that you guys can think of to that perception problem? Me, I feel as if it's if if it's the schools. I mean, they took all of these shop classes out of these junior high schools. The kids were just brought aware that they could do something with their hands, never using a tool. Right. Did you, you know? have shop in, in, in high school? Absolutely. Did you have shop yeah, in your high school? Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. we didn't have yeah. shop in my high school. It wasn't, it wasn't even an option. We had it, and, and I actually, I, I loved it. I mean, we went to shop, and you know. I, I hope mean, you loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't love it, I, no, I, I did. I, I loved it. I mean, we, I learned to work on a lathe when I was in seventh grade. Right. You know, and it took that long. Yeah. Yeah, it took me that long. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you learn all kinds of things. Awareness. I mean, just. Just take an art in school. I mean, you learn your talent. You you know, from that way can you go engineering? Yeah. You can go into architectural mm -hmm. uh, details, all that kind of stuff. Right. Design. Right. Right. You right. Know. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, sorry, get, just getting kids aware. Yeah. That they 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 can use these to make some money. Absolutely. You know? yeah, I'm not saying don't go to college. Go to college to get a business degree. So when you're out and you found, you dabbled on with your hands and your tools and so on down the line. So now you can run that construction company. Right. You know how to do it, right? You know. Yeah, that was my experience. I was I was a roofer in yeah. college, a roofer and a, and a and an English major. So I ended up writing about, about yeah. home improvement. So um, yeah, there's there's all kinds of career paths. That yeah. Roof roofer's a good job. It's hard work. It's the hardest. That's the hardest I ever worked. But I, 
the, the education I got on the roof. Education, the gratification yeah. of, you know, you can look up and you did something great right. in two days. Right. You put a brand new roof on a house and it looks good. Right. But yeah. the hard work, the teamwork, yeah. showing up on time, I mean, these are, these are values. I think teamwork is key to a good job site. Right, right. Other things on the list of what we think is causing the problem, um, you know, we have this perception thing. I hear your statistic about, you know, the potential to make money um, at 40 percent above medium, but I, it, maybe it's a perception, but I think a lot of kids figure, well, you know what, I'm going to just go work at Google or Facebook and I'm mm -hmm. going to make $150,000, dollars $200,000. Right. But the numbers don't, right. that, that doesn't bear out in the numbers you're saying in terms of coming out. That, that no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a, good, it's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned Google. Um, home services, this whole industry is really in a sort of, you know, moment of revolution with, with uh, the digitalization, mm. the kind of on-demand nature. So this is a message that we're really um, trying to get out there. For a young person with the right entrepreneurial spirit, um, the right sort of level of tech savviness, you can make a, you can make a killing um, mm -hmm. in, this, in this space now. How, if how you many, figure. How many calls did you guys say were, go, were, were being... Uh, how many service requests. Service requests. Yeah, about 20 million a year. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so this, I mean, there's jobs a, out there. This is a $400 billion industry. I mean, there is right. a lot. So we have to do a better job kind of telling that story about, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what, what the opportunities are. I think the uh, opportunities are good. I'm, an example, I mean, you remember little Joe that worked for us. Oh, I mean, yeah. He was an apprentice back, uh, I think, when you first started. 25th anniversary, 15 years ago. Yeah. So Joe started, and he was with us for almost 14 years. He now has his own company as a guy working for him. He's got two trucks. He's doing a good li making a good living. Yeah. Uh, just got married. Uh, th th there are plenty of plumbers and electricians out there who are, you know, millionaires yeah. many times over. Right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Know, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're not going to, you know, step right into that. That's, no, it takes time. time. To, yeah, you got to build a business. Absolutely, but, um, and I think yeah. that's true no matter what you go into. Right. Whether right. it's the Google or whether it's just go coming out of college trying to find a job. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But point is, this is a very exciting time to, to be in, in this space. Right. There's a lot of and work. And again, we, we, have to, we have to do a better job of getting that, getting that message yeah. out to people. So that sort of takes us to a conversation about the potential solutions. Um, one of them is messaging, mm -hmm. right? The, the idea that we are talking about it, whether it be you know Mike Rowe and the Mike Rowe Works Foundation and the work he does publicly, whether it's Generation Next mm. through this old house, um, these kinds of conversations, you know, just making people aware right. that there are jobs out there to be had has to be sort of probably first on the list of potential solutions. Other potential solutions that you guys can think of that we should be talking about? Well, women, <laughs> women in no, the trade. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, what would you mean, point it's, there? So, so it's so it's half it's half the population. Yeah. It's about one percent you know, 2% in a, in a lot of the trades. Um, so, you know, we've seen in other sectors, whether it's law enforcement or military, you know, women can, can do these jobs and can do them oh, they can extremely well. Um, but our industry has not done a good job of uh, bringing them into we, the fold. We've, we've had a couple of uh, young ladies work for us uh, years ago. We had one, one girl that uh, worked for us and then uh, Mary. You know, let's talk about it a little bit um, in terms of our apprentice program, specifically who we've worked with and, and where they've worked. And people have seen them on our show um, now for years, and they can see them right now working with their hands. Um, you talk about women. We had two people working with Jeff Sweener down in Westerly, mm -hmm. um, and Mary was one of them. That's right. And she came to us from the Tupelo, Mississippi area. She, she really, was a baker. Yeah, she was a baker. She did a, you know, she did a, a, a swap in career um, because she thought she really wanted to get into that. Uh, we also were joined by Kevin um, Barker at that job site as well. Kevin, a uh, Marine. A Marine, uh, he's correct. A, he's a talented guy now. He's a very talented finished contractor, but right. he could do it all. Carpenter, working for Jeff. Yeah. Uh, but we also had, uh, on the Brookline project, we had Carly working alongside of Eric, um, both, you know, sort of eager to do it and talented. Another hard worker. Um, very hard worker. Yeah. And if you, if you actually step back to the, our very first class, uh, we had Nathan and Bailey who yeah. were working on the Newton project as well. Yeah. Well, way back when, we, when you first started, we had uh, Laura. Yeah, you know, Laura? That back in, in Little Joe's um, was, year as well. So I guess we've done a good job of maybe pulling them in, but we have a, an unfair advantage, sure. which is people want to come work for this old house, yeah. Yeah. and some of them actually want to work for Tom Silva. I mean, not all of them. <laughs> some of them want to work for Tom Silva. You had to add that. I did. <laughs> I did. It's live. What are you going to do? <laughs> but 
That's not happening everywhere, obviously. What's the yeah. percentage of women in the trade, did you say? Did you yeah, have it's one, one, two percent, yeah. Wow. Wow. Rounding error, yeah, basically, yeah, in the right. whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know the women that we've had, the young girls that we've had, are, they're hard workers. Yeah. They're not afraid to do, they're, they, they never complain about any job you, you ask them if they want to do it. Yeah, right. oh, I'll dig in, dig in, or whatever. And you can count on them. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what, what we hear from our pros, if they can get one, mm. if they can get one female in the crew, you know, ideally in a, in a leadership role, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, project manager. A good organizer. That, you know, yeah. that sort of creates the culture of inclusion and then it's easier to bring more in. But getting that, you know, getting that first one has kind mm -hmm. of been the, the sticking yeah. point for a lot of crews out there. I don't know what your guys' experience is, but I got three kids, two boys and a girl, and the only one who's really competent to be on a job site is my daughter. Because <laughs> the boys are, she runs you know, at this yeah. stage, I mean, they're small. But at this stage, they're like, ah. But my daughter's the only one who actually listens and executes. She's in charge. She, no question Kathleen's about it. Kathleen's in charge. Yeah, I have a similar well, experience yeah. at home. So. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, so I don't know yeah. why they don't really run the world. Yeah. Um, I guess it is incumbent upon us then as fathers to you know, project that message to them that we would Encourage. be proud if our daughters went into absolutely. the trades. Um, the other thing, though, that I would add into the mix in terms of at least messaging, and this is something that you know, I, I didn't grow up in the trades, and I, I didn't... I never practiced it for money, um, and I still don't because I just follow you around and talk about it. But I always regretted the fact that I've never run my own business. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that the best way to do that is by getting into the trades. I was in finance, and the chances of me ever running my own bank are you know, less than zero. But if you get into the trades, it can be the fastest way to owning your own business, right? It's very rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're running the trades, but you're running all elements. I mean, you're pushing the jobs, you're organizing, you're, you're trying to balance the books and keep the ca customers happy and keep your workers happy, and you get a lot of gratification from it. I mean, if, if, I think if kids knew that they could make a career of it, they could learn while they were working, you know, mm -hmm. you get with a good crew right. and exposure, you're going to be taught by that crew. Um, and that they can work their way up in probably not that many years, that they can right. end up being their own business owner, that would be exciting to a lot of people. Absolutely. So, and you're getting paid during the process of the learning. That's, yeah. Yeah, I got a couple young relatives down, down in Jersey, um, electricians. These guys, are, they're like 25 years old. They're making, you know, well into their six figures. Uh, yeah. So it's... Yeah, um, I mean, the, the, the guys that work for us, a lot of them, they all have their own home. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Car, vehicle. It's, it's a wonderful career path, it really is. We're, we're going to um, get back to a couple of these subjects, but questions are, are starting to flow in, so I just want to go to a couple of them. And just as a reminder, we're live. If you have questions for these guys, even if you have a comment about this particular issue, you're welcome to throw it into the comment sections on the platforms where we are coming to you live which is YouTube, Facebook, and the thisoldhouse.com page. Uh, we'll be going for another 10 or 15 more minutes or so, so you've got time to do that. We've got other things to talk about, um, but just getting into it right here. Uh, this is... Here's a question. This one comes to us from Mark on YouTube. It caught my eye. And Mark specifically says, at what age, typically, can you begin as an apprentice? And does it vary by trade? You know, so when does this process start for most people uh, if they were thinking about climbing up the ladder and working their way to owning your business? Well, for me as an apprentice, it started when I was really young working alongside my dad. When I that was young, completely young. illegal. You were in <laughs> exactly. violation of all OSHA but, and building that, and whatever. That was going to be my next thing. Now you have to start <laughs> thinking about when is it legal to get on, on a job site where you can start working. Right. Uh, so it, it really is a matter of the desire or the want that someone, how, how, how much they want to get into the trade. Well, let me ask work. you, how young of an apprentice would you take on one of your jobs? If I sent you a kid who was early on in high school and he was, had the summers off, and I said, go ask Mr. Silva if you can work on the job site, at what point do you say, nope, you're too young? Like, you just don't have the maturity level, I don't need you on a job site, because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of yeah. trouble you can get into on a job site. Well, yeah. Are I mean, you waiting for them to be fully in high school, out of high school? What well, I would say that? they've got to be in high school probably 16 years old, 17 years old at least, because you don't want them too young on the job site. Right. Uh, but you, you know, it, it, we, we had on the Belmont Project, we had a couple of kids that were in college and they were just working for the summer. Never had any desire to work in the trade, but his mother said, you got to get a job. And so 
she was a friend of ours and said, you know, can you put my son to work? He doesn't really know anything. He doesn't really want to do this, but mm -hmm. he's got to get a job for the summer. At the end of the summer, he was doing all kinds. Well, when he worked for us during the summer, he was doing all kinds of things, doing demo, sweeping up when there's nothing else to do, cutting boards, never used a saw before we get him to cut boards on lengths for filler pieces and stuff like that. Nothing fancy, but he was excited. And at the end of it, at the end of it, when he was going back to school, I remember him saying, geez, do you think I can come back next summer? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a good feeling that yeah. he was a kid that didn't really even want to be there, mm -hmm. but he knew he had to get a job. That's and nice. the, when he left, it was like, you think I can come back next year? Uh -huh. which, was, which was a nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So, so some point in high school is okay. Obviously, before that, too young. I think too young. And then you're making a gauge. When you're, when you're, when you're talking to a kid who's in high school, you're looking for what? Are you simply just looking for maturity? Are you are looking for skills? This is at the apprentice. You're finding someone who wants to be an apprentice. You're looking for somebody that, first of all, has the desire or even an attitude. A good attitude is key. Uh, not having the knowledge and how to do things, you can train them for that, but having the right attitude, mm -hmm. I think, is key to anything. Yeah. So a, a desire to be there and a, and a, and a desire or a or maybe just the want to learn, you know, something. Okay. Uh, and you, you build off of that. So I'm going to build off of that question, um, which came to us from, I've lost it now, um, but I'm going to move on to the next one, which is from a gentleman named Reed from YouTube. Reed, thank you for the question, because he's sort of the second half of that. Um, what, uh, I'm sorry, Mark from YouTube gave us the apprentice question. Reed would like to know, you know, what's your advice on when to know it's time to start your own business? So now someone's come up through uh, a company like yours um, or an electrical group or an HVAC contractor. They've learned the skills. They're proficient. Mm -hmm. they got to make that jump to now starting their own business, having their own trucks, maybe a couple guys. Yeah. How, well, how, how many years under your belt do you think people should have? Well, first of all, that? I That's mean. That's a big jump. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta, you gotta, now you're responsible for other people. You're responsible for feeding them as well as for feeding yourself. I think most of the time, like, for example, let's say Joe or Dan, who went out on their own, they work by themselves, first of all. Yeah. And, you so know, they, started, they, they started as sole practitioners. Sole practitioners, working on little jobs, doing this, doing that, and learning. Right. You know, learning how to deal with a customer, learning how to do this. But in the process of working for us, they went to school at night to get their construction license and that's key so now they they're learning they're working they're getting paid they went to, they went to take classes and they came, they have their license so then it becomes when are they ready to bite the bullet and take that chance and take that risk right and they got to feel comfortable but they also you know it's a it's a tight wire that you got to walk but today there's plenty of jobs like yeah. we said yeah i would agree with that i think i think 5 years is, is kind of the sweet spot. At least, you know, you need at least five years to. Yeah, you need at least. I would yeah. say you need at least. It depends on how young you come in and and what what you know. Right. right. How fast? How fast of a learner are you? Right. Right. Uh, I think that's that's really important. But I would say five to eight years. Five, right. Five to ten at the most. Right. So, right. Right. Is it is it safe to assume that all of your members are um, owners? Mm, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Do you have a sense of the profile of the owners in your, in your guys' membership, you know, in terms of are they, um, are they in their 30s or in their 40s? Do they have one guy or 50 guys? Right, yeah. can, you, can you paint a picture of what the construction crew, company crews look like? Yeah, so our network of pros has grown to about 250,000, so oh, there's you know, a, lot of, a lot of variation in there. But I would say the business owners are, yeah, are going to be at least 10 years in. Mm -hmm. um, I think it takes that long to, yeah. uh, to, you know, to learn the trade, but to learn the ins and outs of, of learn, the business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are primarily going to be, um, you know, I would say mid-size um, outfits. Mid-size so being part. 10 guys or 30 guys? Yeah, ten, uh, you know, 10 to 50. That's, 10 a, to 50. that's a big window. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a big window. Yeah. Right. yeah, if you've got 50 guys, you've got a good outfit, right. yeah. big outfit. Yeah, yeah that, that is a huge in terms of the thing. Yeah. It, I was talking. It, to, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Well, I was talking about the roofer down in Florida um, earlier. He had a, you know, he had a uh, opportunity for a thousand uh, house um, bid, but his well, crew, what, a thousand roofs, uh, a thousand roofs. Yeah. No, uh, he could so own, this is the developer who's doing a big right. development spec or something like that. Yeah. 
So this was a great opportunity for this guy to really grow his business, but unfortunately, he, he just couldn't, couldn't, he couldn't get the help. Yeah, he could, yeah. yeah, he was scrambling. He was calling in every single favor he could, but could only get out to about 300. Um, so, I mean, yeah. well, you brought up Florida. Think about the devastation that that's happened down in the Florida and the islands right. with these with this weather. I mean, all those homes that were destroyed. That even brings more work right. in right. for people to do a roof, put siding on, install windows, build the walls, whatever, wire and plumb them. And, no, that's, and what we, that's why this is that's such, a, such a secure. so much work out yeah, there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it's very, it just, you just can't get help. But so Dan, in that case where the, the, the person in your system, the roofer, he couldn't get enough guys right. to fulfill the thousand roof bid. Right. He didn't get it. Did not get it. He yeah. did not get no, it. I checked it with him last week. He's, yeah. So that's a huge make it work. missed opportunity for him. For him, yeah. But he also can't grow his company, right? Because he can't find enough people. Right, yeah. right. So in his case, he's trying, mm -hmm. but there's nobody knocking there's on just, the door. Yeah. There's not just so he there's can't just fill just it. Not the bodies, yeah. 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 Do you find that um, with your members that they are struggling to find the people that they could grow their business if they had more young people? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This is one of the key questions we ask in our survey. And about 50% of them said, yes, this is impacting my ability to grow my business. No way. Yeah. So, yeah. They, so they are part of that 4 million jobs unfilled. In other right. words, they've got work for more jobs, more bodies, and they just can't get them in there. Right. So they're turning down work. Right. Yeah, exactly. And 50% exactly. of your, how many members again? 250,000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How big it is. Yeah. Half of yeah, them shoot. came back and said this is. Right. So then all right. of a sudden, to, it, when I hear that, that starts to push it, you know, beyond the world of the, that we live in, construction. Of oh, yeah. And that becomes a national crisis where the whole economy of the country is constrained by the fact that we can't actually fill yeah. people into these jobs. No, there's all kinds of multiplier effects here that, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, we're talking well, so explain that. So how does that play itself out? Well, I mean, the, so um, our Florida roofer, you know, lost the bed. The developers now got to scramble to, you know, to find Get somebody someone who, else that can yeah, do it. Yeah, so it's slowing down. And that's a challenge for him still. Yeah, yeah so yeah. he can't sell the houses, so the real estate, you know, local real estate is, is impacted. So that's yeah, what And, it's, and it's we're talking residential kind of construction. Think about the commercial end of the high risers and, right. uh, you know, all of those. That's union looking for help too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 we talked to a union guy a couple of times. He says, we're setting up classes to teach people. We're just trying to get them in here so we can teach them uh, what to do, how yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know, we look for laborers to, the, to everything. It, it, it's... Yeah, you got to be innovative. There was another, another roofer um, out, out of Texas who, who we checked in with. Um, big Latino population down there. So that was his first thing, make sure his foreman was, was bilingual. And then he sent this guy out into the community, churches, soccer fields, mm -hmm. you know, wherever he could uh, find able bodies. A lot of these guys were, you know, dishwashers or, or delivery people, not, you know, not necessarily making a great wage. Well, here's an opportunity, you know. Yeah. Come, yeah. Um, he also, is one, he, he, um, he buys and sells houses, so he always has a house where he can bring these guys in and uh, train them. They just, you know. Right. Rip the roof off and put it put it right yeah, back on. Yeah. Within four to six weeks, they're they're more or less up to speed. They're ready to mm. to hop on the crew, um, and again make two, three, four times what they were. Um, four to dishes. six weeks. Four that's, to six. Weeks. That's yeah. pretty amazing. That's, yeah, it's, that's fast. That's but fast. think about that. He's the, the, in order to get them, he is canvassing parks right. and neighborhoods, physically looking for bodies. Right. You right. Know, that's yeah. a, that says a lot. Right. Yeah. 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 But he's listen. He's getting it done. He's being innovative. And, right. And that's what's that's what need, needed. You got to do. We can talk. Let me take a couple other questions. Um, this is comes to us from Andrew from our uh, toh.com site. Uh, Andrew, thank you for tuning in. He says, I'm 31 and I'm in banking right now. I've always had a passion for working with my hands. Um, I took carpentry and vocational school in my high school days. I am concerned in making the switch at this stage. What advice would you give somebody considering making the switch back to the trades? Uh, boy, this, this hits right home. Former, yeah, former you're banker. A banker. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe you should go back into banking. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> now you're taking advantage of the live thing. Say you're a no. Uh, no. Um, um, yeah. Is it possible to make the switch back? 
You know, 31 it's, it's, years it's old, are you going to take a, it, if, if they didn't force a banker on you like they did me, <laughs> are you going to take a 31-year-old banker, former banker, onto your job site? He's handy. He's done this stuff. Um, he took carpentry to vocational school. He, he probably has, he probably has the talent. Uh, how far it goes, you don't know, but you, you know, there are guys out there looking for help, so they may take him on and, and, and see, see what he knows and... He might, he might do very well. Do you find this, as a, do, are people coming out of other trades and joining your association and getting into those construction jobs? Do you see that? Or are they coming up to the ranks of the trade? Yeah, I mean, ranks? we're certainly encouraging them to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not seeing a, you know, a, a, a groundswell of this, but right. um, it's more, yeah. More and how do you guys encourage them? What are you doing to encourage? Is that public so, awareness? Is yeah, that yeah, a big part of it is, is awareness. So, you know, the report that we put out, we, you know, share that with media partners and policymakers and other, right. other stakeholders. Um, we started a, a scholarship program. Um, so um, anyone who's going into, uh, it could be, you know, it could be college or vocational school, anything construction related, um, there's a scholarship program. $2,500 is not going to, you know, it's not going to, Pay, no, pay all the way, but it's going to help. Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, really, yeah, trying to get the word out as. as Give best us some we specifics can. on how people access that scholarship. Program. So go to HomeAdvisor, uh, uh, HomeAdvisor.com, our website. Yeah. Um, you'll find details there. And it's an application process. Yeah, you have to write an essay, and yeah, right. it's a, it, it, but it's not too burdensome. What one single twenty five hundred dollars scholarship or multiple? Uh, six of them. Yeah, six, six of them. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So every little bit. Helps. Every little yeah. bit yeah. helps. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, we're a little bit out of time, um, but I guess we have to go out with a couple of closing thoughts. We've established the problem. Um, it is acute. Um, it is real. And unfortunately, it is probably going to get worse before it gets better. I don't know if we've nailed down the solutions. I, I don't um, know if anybody knows the solution. It, but I guess we would say that there are... There's a lot of opportunity out there, right? So we know the jobs are out there Absolutely. in terms of opportunity, but there's also a lot of things that are being done, whether it's scholarship programs from your organization, whether it's the apprenticeship program within our organization. But we know from our experience that there are training programs all across the country mm -hmm. um, and that there is associations of companies out there who are looking for people and training people and willing to do that. And so you when know, I hear I, that, I think that, you know, to, to young people and say, go look for it, you I, know, go look for it. I know we're out of time, but I mean, basically, we, we talked earlier off, off camera, I said, I think they should bring it back to the, to the junior high schools and bring these kids, get, at least get them aware that they mm -hmm. can do things with their hands, that they maybe never knew or had the, had the chance to do it. Right, right. 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 Last word goes to you, Dan, any yeah. thoughts? Um, well, so we're seeing, even from some of these high schools, they're not letting uh, right. these guys in. So exactly. it I, I think it really does come back to the stigma and this, this perception right. uh, problem that hopefully, you know, conversations like this are helping to address. Cool. I agree. Dan, thank you for joining us. Um, thank here. you for what Home Advisors is doing in terms of the scholarships thanks, and other resources. Tommy, thank you. And thanks to all of you guys for tuning in, whether it was live or after the fact. We will continue to come to you with more pro to pro lives. Uh, and we will just go out with the sentiment that this is a problem and we can solve it if we work it together and get the word out there and tell these young people or if you're a young person listening, this is a respectable line of work. There is tons of opportunity and upside there. So come on in and join us. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you all out there. We are signing off.